you know, culture for us is our is is, is our largest export to the world here in Atlanta. It is. But we're still not where we could be. Right, we gonna talk biz on this one here. You know what I'm talking about? Big, big. Fuck this one. I heard investment make the four of this. Amazon, the rock nation made investments itself. Go by the building, don't be worried about it. Door split. Even if the mission get hard, you can't avoid it. You see me getting money, well, I'm just expressing myself. It's harder building on your own, you always welcome to help. Build a mastermind group, work to Napoleon Hill. You know All right, cool. What's up, guys? All right, we back again for another amazing episode of Change Agents. My name is Caleb. This is Trav. We okay, have everybody. the phenomenal Ja Rawlings here with us today. Uh, man, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate y'all having me. Yeah. This going to be one of my fun ones, though. Any, <laughs> anytime I get to talk yeah. basketball with anybody, man, they, they be like, all right, Trav, let's get back on top. Right. Like, I'm right. a hooper at heart, so yeah. that's how I go. But, you know, founder of the ABL, man, how did how did that start for you? Man, well, it really started from really childhood, man. You know, a lot of people may or may not know, but I'm originally from New York, um, so I grew up ball was in my hand from birth. Um, actually started playing basketball at three years old, all the way up to collegiate, semi-pro, had a couple of stints to play pro overseas. Um, so I've always been around the game and, and I always tell people like basketball saved my life, man. Like hey. literally my family is like in the streets, in the drugs, games wasn't really like that popular, you know, back then, but um, I could have went that route. But, you know, as people always say, man, that, that little dude, dribbling that basketball around, that's gonna take him some places, you know? And it did, man, it, it, it brought me out of the environment. So, you know, seeing the Rucker early, my, my uncle is uh, the, the original founder of the Holcomb Rucker Park League. So not the EBC wow. with Jay-Z, Fat Joe, but yeah. like when Dr. Before J that, and, yep. you know, everybody used to play. So, you know, growing up around that environment, I always knew that I wanted to do something, whether it was throw a basketball tournament or, put together a league and you know when I moved to Atlanta to play college basketball here at Georgia Perimeter, um, I saw it was like a lane was missing. It was like AAU was good. You had the Georgia Stars, the Celtics, Celtics Team Georgia. Um, and the high school was elite at that level too. You had a lot of guys like Deion Glover, Lou Will, you know. Um, but I didn't see like what I could what I call community basketball or summer basketball. Um, and I was like, yo man, like the city need it. You know, Definitely. so I literally just was like, man, look, I was working at the Hawks at the time. I'm like, yo, man, this ain't fun. I thought this was going to be more fun working in the NBA. I want to go off and do my own thing, man. And, you know, really, people don't really know this, but 12 years ago is when I really started ABL because that's the first time that I wrote it down on paper. Like they literally started. brainchilded, right? Right, right, right. And then, right. you know, a little trying to understand what I'll need and resources and things of that nature. So it really took me about two years to really build the confidence and the resources to be like, yo, I'm out of here. I'm about to go. I'm about to go do my own thing. And um, we kicked off AEBL with um, a charity event because that's what AEBL is about. That's mm -hmm. why I really started it. The NBA guys and all that stuff, that just kind of came, came after with it. But, you know, we actually launched. We're doing a celebrity charity event. The Migos was a part of it, K-Camp. A lot, of the, a lot of our guys that are the top stars now in the music and entertainment, they came out and supported us. And then that next summer, we started the Pro-Am. That was what, 2013, right? That was 2012 that we did the Christmas event. And then 2013 was the first year of the Summer League. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm going to try not to like over talk, <laughs> but this no, 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 is no, no, my no, bag. Right, right. Right. I, I was so, going to say, go ahead. Go New ahead, York City Point Guards. Yeah. yeah. Which which borough are you from? Because I I grade New York City point guards by on the boroughs. Borough. Well, my family's originally from Brownsville, Brooklyn, okay. um, and then they moved all of the younger kids out to Long Island. So I was able to get a little bit of both. Um, so that but means you when could I moved to yeah, that's and, what and, it I, and I was a I was an anomaly growing up because I could shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. So you know when people be like New York City point guards can't shoot, I'm like no, like literally I that's what I can do that now. You know, but um, but that's the Long Island of you. Brooklyn, yeah, Brooklyn yeah. guards can't shoot. Yeah, they're very tough, strong-minded, just handles and getting to the cup. So what year you got? Uh, what year did you go to Georgia Perimeter? Uh, two thousand and two thousand and one. I got there. My mom passed away. Um, on my way so. to college. Um, so I my first season playing was twenty two. I mean two thousand and two. 
probably ran into you, dog. Where you play at? I probably ran, I got recruited by Georgia Perrin. I okay. came out in 06, though. Okay. But yeah, my, yeah, so I was going already. My ninth grade year, though, um, my cousin played for the Celtics. Okay. So I would come up, go to run and shoot. Okay. And then, okay. you know, run and shoot right there on Metro. Yep. So, well, it we was on Metro. In we lived yeah. in there like yeah. 24 hours. Uh huh. Um, so I started, I worked out with Georgia Perimeter maybe 04, 05. Okay. So I left in 04. Okay. So, yeah, so my, my season was 02 to 04. So we was a team that went back to back to the national championship. Yeah, that's why I wanted to play. Yeah. Because Atlanta so. Metro recruited me too, and then West Palm Beach. Yeah. And then I just like, it yeah. kind of went to my yeah, head. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, I tell people, man, and a lot of people, you know, they because I'm not, I wasn't born here, right? But mm -hmm. I've been in Atlanta for 23 years, bro. Yeah, so you, I've been in every sector of basketball here. So like when people be like, oh, he ain't even from Atlanta. Like, yes, technically I am. I just wasn't right. born here. Right, I've right. been living here longer than I lived in New York. And I've been in every, I've been, so I coach high school here, coach AAU with the Georgia Stars, worked for the Hawks. You know, worked in every community capacity that you can think of. I worked at the Boys and Girls Club, YMCA for the city of Atlanta Rec. You know, so for me, when I was building ABL, it was to encompass all of that. That's why it's called Atlanta Entertainment Basketball League. You know, so for me, even like being in Decatur and, and, and going to Georgia Perimeter, those two years, and it's in the record books, it's, we were the hottest, we were like the Lakers of, of Atlanta. For fair. You know, they, they would have to move our games from Georgia Perimeter to Georgia State or the Morehouse. It was y'all, and then right after y'all, it was Lou. Yeah. And Lou yeah. and Mike. Yep. So. Yep. So, and then and then if you think about that, you know, our extension there and where we probably did meet, because we were, all of the Georgia Perimeter alumni would come home in the summer and work out with Pro One. So G. White was running the, White. the, the yep. Pro Runs during the summer. So we would all come home. But when I moved to Atlanta, I never left. So I saw with Gardner Webb out of, from Georgia Perimeter, and then I wound up finishing Atlanta University in the Peach Belt. So I was in, I never left. I just went to school in South Carolina, but on the weekends or breaks, I was always home. Was always home. So I was always in the mix. I was, I was always at Lou game, you know, Lou, Mike Mercer, my guys, you know, and then my group, my first AAU group was Marcus George Hunt, Malcolm Brogdon, Alex Prathers. You know, those guys were a part of that first EYBL, that Nike EYBL yep. championship and team. You know what I'm saying? Kane, so Peach James. Exactly. Exactly. So basketball is it's always... It's your lineage. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's, it, and, and for me, man, I always thought about this city first, you know, and like how can we build something that can sustain and help every level, you know? So people know AABL Pro-Am, but now we have the junior AABL with the little kids, from five to sixteen. Yeah, I didn't even know y'all had that. Yeah, man. We this is this will be our third season, man. The last two years we've had six hundred plus kids. Mm -hmm. And I think the amazing part, and you know, we're gonna get into mm -hmm. more of the yeah. story. Mm -hmm. But I remember playing in run and shoot, playing at center courts, playing at all these courts, so we could go to New York. Yep. Like because yep. we didn't have like this let run and shoot got legendary with hot sauce and yeah. everybody like, yep. like they put it on the map, right. but we didn't necessarily get respect as hoopers down here yep. back then. Yep. So like you would come to run and shoot and once you got your game right, it was like, all right, now I'm yeah. going to Rucker, now yep. I'm going to the Kingdom, yep. now yep. I'm going to that. So I think it was so important what you did was to bring that community aspect and that that like crossover because like now we can hoop against yeah. the pros. world. Now we hooping against the world now. Versus you know? just hooping against <laughs> yeah. the West Side versus the East yeah. Side or whatever. Yeah. So that's dope, man. Yeah. Um go ahead. I was just gonna say real quick. Um, so again, bro, the, the show is called Change Agents. So yep. it's like, we wanna highlight like really key people like yourself that really bring change in the real way to their industry. So like for you, you know, coming out of high school, coming out of college playing ball, mm -hmm. you transitioned to like ownership. You know what I'm saying? What was that pivot or what was that transition like for you? It was rough, man, because you know, I, I, since I was a little kid, I thought I was going to the NBA. You know, like there was no, there was no other option. Right. Like we didn't, my mom, we didn't even talk about jobs, Nothing. what you wanted to be. It was like, you go into the league, you know? And literally like, that's how my, my neighborhood, <laughs> my family, like everybody's like, yo, he don't, he play basketball. That's what he do. You know? And I play other sports. I play football and baseball, but basketball in New York is that thing. So it don't matter. I even play lacrosse. You get what I mean? Because that all was of that stuff is just to stay in that's shape, it. To stay out exactly. of trouble. Exactly. Cause there wasn't no one-on-one -on -one trainings and all that. It was like, play these other sports. And it'll keep you, you know, going and motivated. But I feel like, you know, when I started realizing that window was closing to make it to the league, 
Um, I did have like an early short set at the D League when they first started. Um, like actually me and JJ Barea was battling for that spot that he got on that D League team for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, and I just started seeing, man, like, yo, it's like basketball can take you so far and you don't even got to be playing the game. Right. You get what I'm saying? So right. like once I started seeing successful people that look like me, like being like, yeah, man, you know, I, I don't hoop no more. They used to be all Americans in college and stuff. I'm like, yo, that might be, that might be another lane. Um, and I think the biggest hurdle was that like identifying what I wanted to do. I don't think the drive, the determination was there. Whatever I was going to do, I was going to be successful. But I didn't know if I wanted to be a trainer. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to be a coach, an agent. You know, so because now my generation, we were the first generation. Because if you think it's, I came out in, um, I came in, came out in 07. Mm -hmm. So that's LeBron. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, right, right, so right, now right, you're right. seeing people that like are doing business. You get what I'm saying? And I knew, like, I grew up around Sonny Vicario. So that was Sonny. one of the people who, even no, though he didn't look ABC like me, camp, yeah, bro. you know, even though he didn't look like me, I'm like, yo, how is this dude? Like, people don't know, dude. That's why Michael Jordan got his deal. That's why LeBron got his deal. You know what I mean? So like, I'm like, dude, these dudes doing some dope stuff. Yeah. I want to learn about that. Right. You know, Sonny was like Worldwide West before Worldwide yeah. West. Yeah, but nah, he's way big. I, I, my but I'm saying he's opinion, where Worldwide, Worldwide West. Worldwide West can't. Worldwide never touch West Sonny. can't touch his his socks, man. This dude was the dude that literally disrupted the sneaker industry and made basketball be the most important thing. And then culture came after. Because once we started as a culture, start re wearing basketball shoes outside like they were regular shoes, and it was like, yo, it took off. You know, but for me, I think that that in between of trying to identify what I wanted to do career-wise, like how 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 would I do it and what I wanted to do, and then really just you know, betting on myself, like, yo, I'm gonna make something happen, you know? And then, like I said, I, I've always, since I was young, I used to tell people, like, yo, I'm gonna I'm a own this, or I'm gonna be this, and they'd be yeah. like, bro, shut your ass up. You know what I <laughs> mean? Like, right, 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 right. My friends will tell you. Yeah. Like, my right. childhood friends, we literally talk about this every time we talk. And they'd be like, yo, you remember that time we were sitting on the block and John was like, da -da? yo, he doing it. Yeah. You know? And I was bad as hell as a kid. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I was bad, I was like, kicked out of school, in detention, in school suspension, majority of the year. So, Same. you know what I'm saying? So for me, like, to get out in the real world and in the corporate space, like, I always just, I don't like rules. So you start creating rules, I'm like, nah, I'm good. But right, I think, right. like, when you a kid, or even just, like, when you in certain systems, even when you're in corporate, some people just have a disruptive mindset. That's me. And I always felt like, I'm disrupting because y'all don't see past whatever this is. Yep. So like when I was in school and I would get in trouble, I would be like, I'm not getting in trouble just because I'm bad. Yeah. I'm getting in trouble because y'all stagnant. Yeah. And, then, and and you know my mom used to say it's not behavior, it's y'all not his brain just somewhere else. It's stagnant. You know, and I'm and that, I'm past that yeah, already. Yeah, and, and that's literally like what my career has been. If you if you if anybody can look at the, the time stamps of my growth and where I'm at career wise from working in the NBA. To start an AEBL, like a lot of people were against me starting AEBL, just for for no they reason. Said just it ain't gonna work. No, I, I feel like they felt like they had a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's not gonna work. That's some New York shit. Right. Because right, people right. don't know AEBL was originally outside. Yeah. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So when I started it, it was a vision to bring the Rucker to Atlanta outside. And when people, when I would tell people that, they would be like. How the hell are you going? Like, we don't even play basketball outside. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, right, I'm telling right. you, bro. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Cause it's about community. Yeah. It's and, about then, and then the second, and then the second year. So first year, we started uh ABL. I don't want to jump ahead of y'all questions. No, you good, you good, you good. We yeah. started ABL in the fourth ward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People I'm starting to tell the story of why. So I, I yeah. do a lot of research. Yeah. So one, fourth ward at the time was like the third most poverty stricken community in the United States of America. Right. It looked like we were in New York. If y'all ever go stand in the park, it's got like the polo ground buildings, yep. right? The senior citizen. Then you got the whole neighborhood behind it. So I'm like, yo, this feel like New York. I'm going to do it here. Then people don't know what Clyde Frazier is from the fourth ward. I know that. You see what I'm saying? That's one of the greatest basketball players ever. You get what I'm greatest saying? Nick people think he's from New York yep. because just he embodied that he embodied lifestyle, you know? So when the I was thinking, coats. that's it, you know? <laughs> and when I was thinking about starting AB, I was like, yo, this would be a great place um, for it to start and be birthed. 
So I was like, yo, this is all they got. This is what we're going to work with, you know? And then to year two, so first year, it started building. People were like, oh, this is dope. You know, we had good crowds come out or whatever. Um, and then again, me always thinking a big and above. I'm big like, yo, you know what? I'm going to bring a whole NBA court outside on this court. And people's like, how you going to do that? I'm like, I'm going to show you. I'm building. Went, got an NBA court, put it outside. And I think at that point, people was like, hold up, this motherfucker not playing. He you get what I'm saying? Yep. And the bad part and the good part of this story is that though I accomplished that and I made that happen, literally every weekend it rained. So if you know anything about a hardwood floor, it's alive and uh, breathing. Yeah, yeah. So we we literally, the seasons back then used to be like seven or eight weeks. I can't even remember. Yeah. But half our season was inside. Because, so, of the because of the rain. Because I'm I'm one, I'm very determined. So I'm like, okay, rain, cool. We just go inside. It may be a little bit different than what I want to do, but we still gonna play ball. Still gonna get this game. But when we went inside, bro, it, it just turned to something else. And literally, I could feel it. Like as I used to meet with my team every day when we got to that part. Like, yo, I do not want to go inside. And they'd be like, why? Like, you know what I mean? It's cool. It's air conditioning. I'm like, bro, but the vision is out here. You got the this. city skyline, the whole nine. But like, we started getting, I think the last two, our playoff week and our championship week is stormed. I'm wow. talking about like, you couldn't even see outside. You know? So we like, That's yo, crazy. We got either you. we can cancel the games or we going to go inside. So the playoff week, we went inside and that gym, I think it hold like 325. Bro, it was max capacity, and it was probably about another 500 people outside. And I'm Trying like, in the oh, rain. I'm like, oh, hold up. This, so, 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 Paul, this is yeah. year two? Yeah, this is year two, right. when I bring the hardwood floor out. That's crazy. So I'm like, okay, hold on. We got something. Right. So I'm like, again, I'm still fighting for championship weekend to be outside, because I don't spend a lot of money on this court. This court. Like, we got <laughs> the NBA baskets out. We got, you know, we got the whole night. It looked like Rucker Park. You yeah. know what I mean? So championship weekend. It, it rained again. And I'm like, God, leave, man. So we go inside, and it was Lou Will versus, uh, uh, no, that was first year. Second year was um, Lou Will versus Street is X in the championship. Oh, so you yeah. you so you got two chains and you got Lou Will yeah. in the championship against each other in this small little gym. And I was like, yo, you know what? Maybe <laughs> I got to go a different direction. You know, and the next year, Literally scrapped the whole plan of the outdoor. We moved to Grady High School, and the rest is history, bro. You know what? Why it's so weird to me that like people didn't understand the vision? Cause you really only like four or five years removed from an one. Yeah. So they literally yeah. had just did it. Yep. So I'm like, why don't you? But like you said, it was a it was a hot sauce thing connected with that it was like not serious basketball. Yeah. And that's what they a lot of people gimmick. write. A lot, a lot of people, and I, I just had to explain that to my nine-year-old son. He did, he did, like, we watched the N1 mixtape doc. He doesn't understand. He don't understand why they were Like, why are they doing that? Right, because he's <laughs> just used to structured basketball. You know, he's like, well, that's not LeBron, and that's like KD and Kyrie. Yeah. So who are these people? Who are these you people? Know? Why so, do people care? So I think that was a part of it that they were like, is it going to be street ball where people going to be doing tricks, or is it going to be, like, real Ooh. basketball? And then I think that the next, the next like pivot for us was when we went to Grady, um, and I tell people this all the time, you don't see a lot of black people in, in that neighborhood, unless you like something going right, on at Piedmont. Right, right, Piedmont right. So yeah. to start seeing all these people start coming to Grady, which, you know, like I said, I, I don't even understand what the disconnect was because we still in the fourth war. You're just close to the you Piedmont just close to yeah. But once once the NBA players started coming in, and a lot of them wasn't even playing. They were just coming, coming to the games there. to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the artists and celebrities started coming. And then it was like, now we got to buckle down in the community because this is really for them. And then once I felt like we made that real connection with the Atlanta community, people like, yo, it's free. We ain't got to pay the park. You know, yeah, most of the time we yeah, had some type of... Yeah, it, we giving the kids, you know, sneakers and different things. It was like, now we got the city. So I feel like we started, we had the celebrities, we had the NBA players, but once we grabbed hold of that community, I, it's, it's, it hasn't been the same vision that I had from the beginning. It's, it's way beyond it. Way bigger yeah. than that. So like, um, I just want to talk about this too. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you play basketball, you play basketball too. I yeah. play, play pretty much everything, including like, football was like my main thing, Okay. Right? 
So like for athletes that are watching this and you know want to transition into other things, like what what type of like you know feedback or advice would you give them that are trying to find other avenues to you know transition after athletics? Yeah, because when that dream don't work, people right. don't realize that's the biggest heartbreak you'll ever yeah. have, man. Yeah, it's life it's life changing for most people to be honest with you, especially in this day and time with social media and you're hyper bold in the sense as an athlete at some point, right. and then now you're just a normal person. Um, you know, my advice is this, man, and I, and I tell the athletes that we represent and work with this all the time, put the right people around you, give them your dream a little bit, and, 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 and motivate and inspire them to find their lanes. Um, and then when it's that time for you to make that transition, you're already in like, don't you stop working. have a leg. You yep. get what I'm saying? So, like, you know, most athletes that are, are major athletes, they're brands. That money's going to stop eventually, unless you sign the AI deal or something like that. And even with AI, like, AI's not even a brand no more. Like, he's just, like, AI, and then there's Reebok yeah, with there's the Reebok, Iverson yeah. brand. That won't happen to LeBron. That won't happen to Steph Curry. It won't happen to KD because they got business people around them who are already got them set up for when it's over. Yeah. Who are working you know? on that the same way they working yeah. on their game. Yeah, you 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 see them, they're they're out um creating businesses and things of like that. And I know that's hard for just the regular player, right? That football, basketball, baseball that goes into pro, they don't maybe have the money or all the resources, but it's like, yo, you got people around you. Them same people you hanging with at the club and you right, go to the strip right, club right. and then yeah. those dudes have some type of skill set or something that can be helping you prepare while you're preparing as well to be successful after the game is over. You know, so the, the, the steps I tell them is make sure you network, connect with the right people, you know, build the right people around you. Um, Cause sometimes it's not your friends and family that you wind up doing business with. And then, you know, really just look beyond being an athlete on and off the field. You know, that that's, that's what I, I think my college coaches all say that when we, when we, when I reconnect with them, it's like, man, you always had, you, you know, you always had a business or you always were thinking about like, yo, what's next? So like, yo, coach, can I, right. you know, and, and I would always ask, like I said, being a kid from the hood, man, like you don't see no resources to access like when you, when you get to college, you know? Right. And I was fortunate enough to have two or three, because we, we did have three coaches at George Perimeter, um, strong black man, family oriented, and they were aspiring in, def in, in different areas besides just coaching. You know, so when I was able to see that a little bit, I'm like, oh, okay, they they coach, but they own businesses or they run other companies and things like yeah. that outside of it. Yeah. Um, it also it also helped me to see. So now I try to I give that back, and it, it I, I'll be honest, it, it's extremely tough um, with this generation because of social media. They think everything is like it's this. They think everything is like yeah. that, and like. they also think they know everything <laughs> yeah. already. Yeah. Whereas we knew we didn't have information, yeah. so yeah. we was like looking for people. And I think like even with this studio, I don't call it a studio. We call it a creative country club. So my whole I like that. our whole mindset on this was, and not to be racy or whatever, right. but when you go to these white cultures, they have these country clubs where they play golf and Mr. Bill introduced Billy to his son and then yeah. his dad and yep. they go get a job. Yep. So like as far as building that network, that's why we wanted to do this. And that's why we also wanted to do it on the, in the West End. Right. Like, there was other places we could have went and did it. Right. Like, right. even when you came up, that's Georgia Parks and Rec's uh, center of kids out there right now. Right. And all of them, we talked to them about social media. We talked to them right. about networking. Right. We talked to them about just asking questions. Right. Because if you don't ask questions, you'll never know. No. But I wanted to give everybody a, a chance to not only be around Caleb if you want to shoot videos, but... Be around job if you want. If you're a hooper, you just trying to find a transition, right, right. or if you want to start your own tournament. Yeah, and you also work for the Hawks. Yeah. I do want to get on that a little bit because we had another guy, uh, Mike Shaw, who used to run marketing okay. for the Hawks. Yeah. What did you do for the Hawks, and why do you feel like that just didn't work for you? So I used to do basketball development, which is uh, basically we create the program training um, for all of their youth basketball throughout the community. Um, and then we also, we work with the, the players a lot, like with functional events, whether they were going to do a camp or they were going to do... Yeah, right so, that. you know, whatever, whatever that outreach was. So basically, basketball development oversaw a lot of the community um, engagement and experience that they give. 
Um, and for me, it wasn't, it wasn't even necessarily something that was bad. I just didn't see a lot of growth channels there or as much as they have now because it was like then it was just like, oh, you kind of just on this side, we on this side. Um, and the ideas that we had are a lot of the ideas that I see them doing now. They just don't want to be innovative. Right. Man. You get what I'm saying? And maybe it wasn't, they didn't have the right team. And, you know, so I understand now that I'm, I'm the boss, you know, I see how some things get overlooked or missed. Um, or just push back two or three yeah, years because it's yeah, just not because the priority. Yeah, because it's not the time or the priority. So, um, for me, it, it wasn't so much bad, but it, it was more generated around my entrepreneur spirit and me creating my own identity and what I thought basketball should be in the city. Um, and as a whole, because, you know, I'm using the city as a pilot for the world to be able to see, right? Like, I mean, I'm, we get ready to go to Africa in like two months to do some stuff over there that they're watching us do here, you know? So for me- It's like when the NBA do beyond the borders. For sure, but for sure. Nobody thought somebody who just started a, a outdoor basketball tournament league yeah. could grow into yeah. that. Yeah, and I and I think that I think that the, the last piece on that about you know the transition or within the Hawks was that um, I also think they stifled a little bit of our growth, just thinking like we're just like I'm I, and I know we everybody's like ABL 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 right, but before there was ever an ABL there was a job I was here. You see what I'm saying? I was doing marketing, I was creating strategies, I was building events that. I just was behind the scenes. I didn't. I didn't. I don't need to this day. I don't need to be in the front. I, mm -hmm. It's it's reasons why I'm in the, in the front. You get what I'm saying? But um, that was always me. Even with ABL for the first two years, nobody knew who ran ABL because I would just disguise myself with my team. You get what I'm saying? I never was like, yo, look, I'm the guy that created it. People were literally. I have a friend to this day that came from New York, came down here, and was like, yo, I'm going. This is this is no BS. Came down here, was coming to the game, <laughs> randomly just bumped into somebody that like was a part of our team, and was like, "Yeah, man, I'm I'm down. I'm I'm going to this league, um, ABL." And the guy was like, "Yeah, that's my league." You see what I'm saying? Not mm -hmm. knowing this was my friend. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? They just thought it was a general person. Just a they just bumped person. into. So, I, but I was cool. Like he just told me, he's like, "Yo, bro, I just bumped into this dude. He like, this his league." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, it's probably one of my staff because that's how I treat them. I'm like, this, Everybody this is yours. You get what I'm saying? Like, you a part of it. So I was like, don't take no offense to it. Like, if he, even if he's out there like, yo, this is my league and I started, yeah, he, he did help start it. You get what I'm saying? Because he was there when we was putting down the hardwood floor. He but was there when we was sweeping the court. But it's not, it wasn't his vision. It wasn't his brainchild. He's a part of my team. Yeah. You know? But the fact that you didn't get offended by I that didn't. or... Like reprimand him for that. Yeah. That's why I was able to keep growing. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a that's a teachable moment where you could have been like, like you could have went in on yeah. him. Yeah. No. And maybe that puts a different energy yeah. in the rest of your staff. Yeah. And, and it actually, actually to this day, it helped my friend because he's an entrepreneur. He actually is one of the largest um, car detailing companies in New York. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and he was like, bro, that helped me. Like it made me think, like, well, I got to be telling everybody I'm the boss and be on Instagram yeah. posting this mind, this nah. mind. He's like, now you're putting a target on your back, you know, because exactly. now everybody coming to you. And everybody focus on you. Yeah. I yeah. always tell people, if nobody knew Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook wouldn't get sued so yeah. much. If nobody knew who Jeff Bezos yeah. was, Amazon wouldn't get sued. Yeah. Like when you, it's, it's, sometimes you have to put a face on the brand yeah. because you got to put it on your back yeah. and finally get it yeah. to where you want to go. But, but that's a good segue to what I was going to say, where yeah. I'm at now. So for me, ABL is just a business I own. Yeah. I'm not ABL. I'm right, just, it's right, tatted right. on me, everything. Right. Yeah. But that's just a business I own. Yeah. We're you, we're synonymous with each other in the sense because it's something that you can look at and be like, look what he built, right? But I've, I've done so much more. And like that's where I'm at now. It's like I'm showing not not just Atlanta, but the world that like, yo, bro, these ideas and these big events y'all be seeing, I'm behind it. You get what I'm saying? You just know me for ABL because like you literally you can just see know me. one of my houses. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now, like you know, even like last night, we just did the event for the the Clark Nike Dunk event, right? Shout out to Nike. Shout out to Dunk. Yeah. Shout out to Bree. Yeah, man. So you know, even with that, like people are like, yo, your event was dope. Like, no, that's my agency's event. That's that's not my event. That's Fitness First event. You get what I'm saying? So for for me, I've been in the trenches, bro. I, I used to intern at Grand Hustle. I've, I used to be the brand manager for A3C. I've, I've literally done 
majority of the stuff that most people are trying to do now. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? But it's just the thing that I want on that the world can yeah, see. Like, world. oh, that's that's his one, right? But I got plenty but of them. But I got 10 of these. You get what I'm saying? Sneaker ball. And I then, mean, you, you name it, we got them. It's just one is synonymous with me because that was what I put everything into to make it work. And look at community, right? And this is why this is truly a country club. Mm-hmm. You, your agency put on the event. Mm-hmm. Bree Harmon, who hosted the event, yep. is our correspondent for the yep. studio. Yep. He shot the Nike Dunk campaign. Yep. The, the yard runners. Yeah. All, he yeah. shot all of this. Nobody knew all these different right. degrees of separation was just going to come in. Right. So now, now you got a whole 360 thing where it's like, okay, this person is... We can send these 10 kids over here who want to host events like this. Yep. We can send these 10 kids over here who want to build an agency to run these kind of yep. events. Yep. This is the person who can get content. This is the person who do some did some of the contracts. Yeah. All of these different things. There's right. no way if we build community yeah. that we can't build everything yeah. else we want to build yeah. in the world. And right? I say it, I think that's, you know, culture for us is our is is, is our largest export to the world here in Atlanta. It is. But we're still not where we could be. And that's because we're, to me, going back to the old ways, which is selfish and then it's ego. clickish, it right? Ego. That's that's the that to me that that's always been what I saw as a detriment to Atlanta was that if I ain't in your circle, then we can't rock or we yeah, can't. Well, you, I'm not reposting your exactly. Stuff. Like, you know, no. well, we on that <laughs> social media thing now. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't get invited and things like that. But it's like as an event curator, as a content creator, right. as as a person who's leading charge to build a community. Sometimes we got our head down, so we're not looking at every single person. It's people that hit me up all the time, like, yo, can I come? Yeah, bro. And that's why I posted the flyer. I I, I don't have time to like individualize. Yeah, if it was, I can't, if I can't it was reach out the 10, right. And people, people start feeling some way like. instead of just showing up for you <laughs> like, or yo, supporting like. you or supporting even if you don't come, tell somebody else about it. You know, and I think if 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 we can figure that community piece out in a real way and yeah. not just use it as like a tagline, like, yeah, yeah. We, we, un- we unify. Because Atlanta at one point, and I thought this is why I, I fought for the city so hard. Like, there was a time between, I would say, ABL started 12, maybe like 2012 to like 2016 or maybe 17, where we were unified. Like literally everybody moved as like, yo, y'all got this event, Everything everybody to came to it, you know? And then it was like, it started dwindling down a little bit as people started rising up out of it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, how, 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 how he get there? You know what it was? What's that? Paid influencers. That too. And, and it's, not, it's not because that's a bad thing. I want right. everybody to get money. Right. But what it became is, all, I'm only posting my content because this channels my analytics. I agree with that. This channels yeah. my impressions. Yeah. So everything became a, like a business card for just you. Yeah. But back then, because even like when you think of culture, you think of music, you think of fashion, you think yeah. of sports. Even back then, the way Atlanta kind of became like the, the epicenter or the black Hollywood is what I call it. Right. It's because everybody worked together. Yep. Everybody in in except for probably Gucci and, yeah. and Jeezy, right. everybody touched each other's stuff. Yeah. Ch- Two yeah. chains used to own this building. Yeah. Like all of the everybody had a six de- degree of separation. I and mean, now it's just like, we gotta get back to that instead of just saying, I'm over here with my people. Right. Like right. I ain't And I'm never- gonna make sure my people are good. And 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 that's why I say, you know, I'm a I'm a little unique because again, I don't have, I'm usually by myself. Mm-hmm. My Jess is with me. Yeah. I, you don't see me with no, I, I'm not tied to one group or, you know, I don't rock with one group more than another group. Like, I show up and support everybody. You know, if I'm available and I can get out, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm heavily involved with, in my kid's life day to day, you know. So sometimes I can't make it out to an event, you know what I'm saying? But, boy, I'm going to share your flyer. I'm going to tell people about it. Um, so for me, it's like I can, I can be in multiple places without you even really knowing, but I'm going to support what I see. You know what I mean? And it don't even got to be my thing to the point where I sometimes have to tell people that that's not my event. Oh, I'm supporting a homie or, you know, one of my homegirls doing something dope because I do it so much. People are like, damn, you don't, when you sleep, you know, I'm like, well, some of the stuff I post ain't mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's me supporting our city and supporting the things that's going on. So, you know, I feel like now I, I'm not going to, I said I was going to do this 
but humbly, I'm, I'm not going to take that responsibility on myself to try to make everybody uniform. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, 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 the people right. who want it, me and get it. us building, yeah, yeah, and then definitely. people see us and they be like, yo, I'm, I want to do what they doing, you right, know? Right. So maybe we can tackle it that way, but as far as like the, the whole city, I, 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 I've i already backed down from that. <laughs> you know what? And, and we'll yeah. end off on this. Yeah. We had a meeting with John Sally. Okay. Right? So we took, John Sally came in, he saw the space, and he like, man, this is amazing. Y'all got all this stuff. Y'all, what y'all, what is the ultimate vision? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, amongst other things, but I was like, bro, I really want to give black people a space. And he said, you can't change black people. And he said, most of them don't want you to. Right. That what you do is you get the collected people that want to be there and stop trying to make everybody get it. I can agree with so that. You'll go crazy. Yeah. And I ain't gonna lie, when he said it, I was a little heartbroken because yeah. I'm like, bro, yeah. no, nah, this what I'm, right. this what I'm, this right. what the vision is. This is what the vision is. But the vision is still the vision. It's right. just you not trying to force people into the vision. Right. Whoever right. gonna come, gonna come. Yeah. So, yeah. man, we appreciate you. You got anything else? I was just gonna say real quick, uh, where can we find you, bro? Um, I'm on Instagram at Ja the CEO. Yeah. Um, ins- uh, website for AEBL is www.abelhoops.com. Um, you can find, you just Google my name at this point. Um, but we're, we're across everything. I, I appreciate you guys for having me on. Thanks for the opportunity to, to, to be on your you, platform. You. Hopefully we could continue to build with each other and make sure yeah. that, you know, everybody's seeing us from the lens that they need to. Right. And um, salute to y'all for all y'all doing. Appreciate it, bro. Hey, man, we out, man. That was one of my favorite episodes, dog. But it's going to be hard to top that one. We still going to talk basketball for another three hours. But, man, that, I'm Trav. It's Caleb. We out, bro. We out.